Hey, welcome back to Mike the Baptist. We are back with uh, three preacher friends of mine. You might have heard them or seen them. Uh, they are H.D. Jones. Yeehaw, good to be here. Across the table, H.D. and I are mothers from another brother. Something like that. Your because mothers from another brother? Didn't, well, something like that. Didn't somebody say hello, H.D. to you the other day? They did. I get that once in a while. <laughs> it really scares I get me. It. <laughs> but I've noticed lately I'm looking a little older than you. I've, I've got jowls that I didn't used to have. And jowls. Everything's beginning to uh, sag down like one of those, what's that painter that paints? Oh, the, Degas? Who's is that? that who it is? Maybe. The well, guy that did the time clocks and stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, but anyway, so that's my face now. But anyway, I still get that once in a while. She, I think I think the lady that did it realized shortly after she did it, but she didn't go back and correct right, it. Right, right. She said, hey, HD. And then she had that look on her face like, that's, that's not, not HD. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, all right. It's a compliment, uh, just so you know. It's Dolly, Salvador Dolly. Salvador yeah, Dolly. Not Deck Odds, it's Dolly. Uh, Jason Riccardi is speaking right now, and he's back. What's up? Good to have you back, and... Uh, uh, that's it. Good to have you back. Cool. Michael Coots is also back. Hello, Mr. Jackson. It's encouraging to me that you guys come back because that tells me that uh, you either want to do this, you feel like you have to do it, or you like doing it. I guess hey, whatever it, whatever right? makes you feel you good. You have an all the above button. <laughs> uh, I do. Hey, thanks for reminding me about the button because yeah. I, have, uh, I have slipped on the uh, buzzer. <laughs> uh, on recent episodes, and there's so much material y'all yeah, provide. on the buzzer. Because y'all say uh, uh, real churchy things sometimes, just out of habit, I guess. And we also say some really not churchy things. We do say things. some unchurchy things, too. Yeah. So maybe or that's we're why just I'm, blessed and highly favored. What can we say? Maybe that's why I forget about the buzzer. Um, speaking of that, this has nothing to do with that. But uh, I want to shout out to a friend of ours. I say ours because this friend sent us some uh, cinnamon rolls here recently. And we reviewed them here on the Mike the Baptist program. Did their business increase greatly, I'm sure? Well, uh, she didn't say. Mm. So she she doesn't divulge any of that uh, inside business information. But, by the way, we're still looking for things to review. Right. I mean, if anyone out there would like to promote uh, or just send us something that we can review so you can feel good about yourself, we'll, we'll do our best to help you that. But, anyway, uh, she reached out to me a couple of days ago and said uh, – on the video, I watched the video. She said, especially since uh, there's a Friday night edition that comes out before Saturday morning. She she jumps on the Friday night edition. I guess she just, she's nosy anyway, and so I guess she just wants to be first now, too. And not just nosy, but she wants to be first. So she jumps on the 6 o'clock Friday night YouTube version of Mike the Baptist. But she said, uh, she said I like to watch the video, but she said, you've got these things – uh, that are making me dizzy when I'm watching because behind you guys there are these things moving. Like there's trees and creeks that are moving toward me and swirling around leaves and stuff. So uh, in honor of her uh, dizziness, on this particular episode, we're trying a little slower uh, background that doesn't kind of come at you quite so fast and hard. Now, it's still moving. Because sometimes we get a little boring in what we're saying, so you need something going on on the screen for anybody that's watching to kind of keep the interest up. So That sort of looks like a geometric lava lamp. Uh, it's exactly what it is. It's a geometric lava lamp. Seriously? No. Oh, okay. But that sounded really neat. So anyway, that's for you, Glenda. Uh, I hope this helps your problem. You let us know. Send us uh, uh, an email to comments at MikeTheBaptist.com. We're still waiting on those emails, and I really would like for you to send us some questions for the guests. Well, they're not guests. They're part of the program. Just send us questions, and uh, we'll ask them uh, to give us an answer right here in front of God and everybody, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see if they answer. So uh, That's it. No more new news, but uh, uh, on today's front porch visit... And by the way, I think we did a pretty good job on the last couple of episodes of condensing the front porch visit to accommodate those people that listen fast. Now, if you want a real uh, entertainment uh, suggestion, call up uh, one of these uh, preacher series episodes of Mike the Baptist on YouTube and put it on half speed. And you will see uh, your preachers in a whole different light for a little mm -hmm. bit. 
you, and you'll you see might why. Relive yeah, the you'll 60s. see why it's good. They actually turned out to be preachers, and well, it's it's good that we're kind of pulling back on the front porch. I had you know just the seasons are changing, and yeah, had somebody tell me that you know the length of the program was okay while she was mowing her five acres. Yes, but now that she's not doing that anymore, it's really hard to listen all at one time to us. Um, a lot of people must be li- listening while they're mowing because I had somebody yeah. mention the same yeah. thing about mowing. Yeah. Um, Hmm. Interesting. Well, you know, you don't have to listen to this whole thing at once. You can listen a little down and a little later. It's just a thought. Maybe that'd be a good front porch, you know, like mowing stories, incidents. I mean, everybody's got a mowing story. Come on. Uh, we do. I don't have a mowing, but I have a good trailer incident story. Maybe. But Okay, front porch visit. I thought it'd be interesting uh, to talk about uh, animal encounters uh, that we might have had that we can remember the funnier the better i think the funnier the better within reason so if you have an interesting animal story uh an animal encounter or an animal adventure something related to animals pets farm animals any animal jungle animals you know just an animal Mm. so Coots, are you sure. prepared and ready? Yeah, I'm prepared today, okay. uh, at least for animals. <laughs> well, this is a change. Right? As just opposed to other days. Wow. Just for the animals. Okay. Um, going back to the elementary school years, um, we had an all-school assembly uh, one time, and some people from the zoo came in and brought different animals inside for us to, to see, and they brought a bunch of reptiles. So one of the reptiles, of course, is the great big old boa constrictor snakes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they had one of those. It was probably six, eight feet long, something like that. I don't remember how big it was. But the ones that wanted to, they would let you come up there at the front of the the auditorium and you could, you know, touch them and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm not afraid of snakes. You know, I've always thought reptiles were cool. So I went up there. They had me hold my arms out and they draped it across my arms, you know, and stuff like that. And it was really cool and stuff. Um... Now, my mom just is absolutely terrified of snakes to the point that uh, she would wake up in the middle of the night from nightmares in the just where the sheets might get a little <laughs> rolled up. She thought there were snakes in her bed. So mom had this really bad phobia of snakes. Well, at that assembly that, that day. The, I don't mean to laugh at your mom's phobia. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, you ain't hurting her feelings. So, uh, at that assembly that day, the snake that they brought in happened to be shedding its skin so i was like oh that's cool so uh you know there's flakes you know a snake skin you know a couple inches in square so i picked a couple of those up you know i was going to take them home and stuff and of course back then you always packed a lunch your lunch box so i put them in my lunch box and uh, to t- keep them safe and take them home didn't think anything else about them got home mom got into the lunch box to clean it out and she encountered what she thought was a snake and flipped out and freaked out and stuff like that so pretty good yeah so you know i took a few years off of mama's life i guess you have this thing about doing things to your mom to freak her out that's not the first story you've told about yeah she's she was an easy target her birth certificate and you tell us one time yeah birth certificate told her something was wrong on it and cost her a month of her life trying to straighten that out or a year or something yeah it's it's a while so yeah yeah me and my dad we kind of had that gift of torment (laughs) Well, there's nothing wrong with that. You got a good story out of it. So. Yeah, you know, if you have a gift, you got to use it, right? Uh, you should. Yes, that's right. Even if it's even if it's useless. Yeah, God gave it to you. Use so it. We have a table full of that here. <laughs> At times, uh, Jason. Um, I, I think the one that I'll land on is the. I'll preface by saying Alzheimer's sucks. Okay, so uh, you have to find humor where you can. So, on my dad's birthday, I think it may have been his last birthday that we really had with him uh my mom was like hey let's let's go to the nashville zoo and we we're like all right that sounds like fun my dad loves animals and we can go ahead and do that and uh, i was like i've never been to nashville zoo sounds like fun well my dad has this little chihuahua who's, who's like a a bit of a land shark and uh, his name is ratchet and we we couldn't <laughs> take him to the zoo we just it's not really something that you should you should do. He, you can't trust him around other people. So we're like, well, we, we probably don't need to be taking him where there's going to be a lot of other people. So he, he has Alzheimer's, and uh, he starts throwing basically a temper tantrum and 
pouting. Um, and so he was very upset that we would not take Ratchet. <laughs> so he's, I mean, he is, he's essentially acting like what a, about a three or four year old does when they don't get their way and you got to kind of drag them and they're just being as miserable as you can to be around them. And so we get to the, uh, the meerkats <laughs> and my dad, he sees all the meerkats and my, so my dad's chihuahua is a little kind of like a brown colored chihuahua, tan brown colored chihuahua. And we get to the meerkats and my dad just, he, he's looking over the railing. He starts laughing. I mean, he has been flat and miserable the entire time. And then he starts looking over the railing, just starts laughing, slapping the railing and getting really excited. And we just kind of look at him like, dad, you, you okay over there? And he's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm doing great. Ratchet's been here the whole time. So he, he saw the meerkats and he's like, there's my, there's, there's my dog Ratchet. Uh, but <laughs> so he it, was watching it gets, Ratchet. Yeah, it gets even better. So we go a little bit further down the road. My dad's mood has improved greatly. He's, he's actually not being so sulky and pouty. And we get to this um, kangaroo interaction. So you get to go into the area with these kangaroos. And they, multiple places, they have these signs that say, do not get off of the trail. Don't don't get off the trail. Stay on the concrete. <laughs> and don't go chasing kangaroos. If they if they want you to pet them, they'll let you. And, and they've got to be within arm's reach. So we get in there, and we walk in. And the first thing my dad does is he sees one of the kangaroos, and he's like, Ratchet, get over here. And he takes off the trail and starts running after <laughs> a kangaroo. <laughs> And so then, then they, I mean, they're on him like Gestapo. They they just come and like they're. I feel like we're about to get tossed out of the park. And they get him and they pull him back. And and we were like, okay, look, he's got Alzheimer's. We apologize for that. But it was something about the color of the meerkats and the color of the kangaroo in his mind. It triggered the fact that there was his his dog, uh, Ratchet. I think that's hilarious. You had a Chihuahua named Ratchet. Yeah, so <laughs> where that comes from is my dad was a mechanic <laughs> for years and years. He started turning wrenches when he was like eight. And uh, so this dog will just, he'll pick up a toy in his mouth and he'll just walk around you repeatedly. And when you go down to pet him, he'll run away from you. And then he'll come back and he'll just keep walking around you and just spin in circles. And we're like, what is wrong with this dog? <laughs> so that's where he got the name Ratchet, which is spin circles and goes like there, there's something wrong with all chihuahuas. Mm-hmm. Yes. They eat they Taco Bell. <laughs> they do? Well, see, I didn't know yeah, that. Little, Carol Taco Bell. Isn't that the little dude who's on Taco yeah. Bell commercial? Was he a chihuahua? Yeah, uh, he was a chihuahua. Well, th- there is something different about those dogs. They they have like this. Uh, like demon possessed? They have a demon or something yeah. in them. That's right. Yeah, and they're wicked little dudes. And they and they have no idea they're little bitty dogs. Yeah. They're very, very protective of their owners. Hmm. So did, did you remember from a previous episode that his dad hit a kangaroo on his motorcycle? No, no, no. Didn't hit a kangaroo. Was chased by. Oh, chased. That's right. So yeah, yeah. So uh, you can, your dad and kangaroos just didn't get along. Did he tell that story? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. So my dad. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the key was you've told that story already. Yeah. Just real quick. <laughs> kangaroo. Kangaroo escaped from the zoo and chased my dad on a motorcycle. Right. He's telling the story and nobody believed him, and then it popped up on the news that a kangaroo escaped from the zoo and, and chased him. Chased yeah. my dad on, on a, motorcycle. a motorcycle. Then drove his. The kangaroo was on the motorcycle driving yeah. it. It's crazy. <laughs> That's called a pastoral embellishment. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're telling the same story over and over, right. you have to change yeah. it a little bit. Got to get it up a little bit. You're always good for an entertaining story. I will say that. Yeah, and if and if you have Alzheimer's and you forget that I've told it, it's funny the second time. I don't have Alzheimer's yet. I don't think, but I'm I'm old enough where I don't remember things. You know, you know what? Like stories are kind of new, but which, that's actually works pretty good though. There's like, your sign. You can watch the same movie over and over again. Okay, HD. So, you, growing up on the farm, oh my gosh, yeah, yep. I've got so many stories, you know. But my dad had he's always had cattle, and sometimes he'd have different breeds you know you get all excited about we want this breed we want that breed so he had a charlay bull if you don't know what charlay is it's a white bull mm-hmm. so he has this big white big old bull. bull big i mean their necks are just massive and everything and so this bull would get out and go over into the neighbor's cows you know he was kind of a 
Playboy. Player? He's a playboy. <laughs> yeah. And, Player. Uh, Player. So, Player. But there would be times when you couldn't figure out how he got out. And so dad worked job, and he'd come home at night, and he's tired, and the stupid bull's out, and the neighbor's fussing. Dad would go over there and just, you know, start yelling at this bull, and he'd, he'd find this way to get back over. I mean, literally one time bent the bottom edge of the gate up. Didn't even look like a kid could have gotten under it. And this bull would lay down on his belly and take his front paws and, like, pull himself. I mean, he was really motivated to go see the neighbors. But Dad got tired of that, and he's like, I'm selling this stupid bull. He's costing me more time and effort. So he brings him over to my granddad's house, puts the bull in the barn. Now, this barn is one of these old-time barns that, you know, they just kind of used to put a rock down as the corner post. It wasn't in the ground. Just You just built on these pillars kind of and this old bull got his head up underneath the barn and started lifting <laughs> it's probably a 2,000 pound bull it starts lifting part of the barn up my granddad freaks out he's like man he's gonna tear my barn up gets a 16 pound sledgehammer and beats this bull between the <laughs> eyes until all you hear is Whoa! and he just collapses you know my granddad goes in sets down and we're so, I, remember, I never will forget this we're sitting there watching the nightly news and my dad comes in he goes well did they come pick my bull up today he goes nope <laughs> what happened well, I told him one no need to come pick that bull up. <laughs> Why? He might be dead. <laughs> and we even checked on him, and he did. He did survive. So it was, it was just like he. Um, well, he did not tear up his barn. I'll say so that. I just pulled up a picture of this Charolais bull. It looks like a power lifter. Oh, they're, they're, they're huge. Yeah, they're like they're it's a huge. cow that has been hitting the steroids. Yes, yeah, it's a huge. serious, yeah. serious animal. Don't they use those in rodeo or do they? Yep. yep. Yeah, or is that Brahma? Uh, oh, that too. But they do use Charlie. Yeah, huh. Brahma. The Brahma's the big ones they use. But so yeah, all kinds of good stuff. Um, speaking of rodeo, uh, so when I married my wife, <laughs> she was a rodeo clown. There's well, <laughs> no, but her family was big into rodeo. Oh, okay. And uh, they were big into team roping and that sort of thing. And I had not. Had the only horse experience I had ever had was uh, when I was a young guy at my great grandparents where we used to go, Mama Lola and Lodges. Uh, their oldest son, who lived over the hill, had a couple of horses and they would ride them around. So once in a while, when all of our cousins would come in from Texas and Little Rock, we'd all convene up there in my hometown at Marshall, Arkansas, uh, over at Mama Lola and Lodges. That's where we would all go to. Uh, get into chaos because they had a lot of farm stuff around you know you could roam all over those hills and chicken coops and rabbit cages and but uh, uh uncle floyd would bring those horses over once in a while and i remember i'd never been on uh one at that time i don't remember how old i was but uh i got on one of them he took us up the dirt road above their house and then we were going to ride down past the house up the dirt road turn around and come back I don't know who was on the horse beside me, but they knew what they were doing. I had no idea. All I know is that when the other horse took off, the one I was on, I didn't tell it to do nothing. It just did it on its own. It took off, and it was all – I was just hanging on for dear life. I thought I was just going to die right there. Mm -hmm. But So fast forward years and years down the road, uh, I marry into a uh, team roping family. And got invited a couple of times. Come down, and try it out. No, nope, I don't. I just don't do that. I haven't done it, and I, you know, I need to get a little experience before I tried it. But I went down there one night after enough prodding, and got on one of those. What I did not know is that in a roping horse knows what to do. Uh, it's almost like you're kind of steering a car, uh, and when you press the brake pedal a little bit the rest of the mechanics do the braking so the car once you kind of tap the brake the car knows what to do well these roping horses are like that they're trained to know what to do and i guess there's certain things that trigger the appropriate time to do that all i know is when that uh chute open that calf takes off running both of these horses a header and a healer both these horses are they're out and gone i mean they're going so you just got to hang on for dear life and so imagine a guy that hadn't done much of that before who's also trying to swing a rope around his head while he's riding this thing at breakneck speed just all of a sudden. 
Well, when the header throws and he turns. Uh, so if you're not ready for that, uh, your body doesn't turn unless you're anticipating that turns coming all of a sudden. So I just remember coming up in the stirrup on one foot straight up. Didn't, didn't fall completely out, but, uh, and it didn't get better. That told me that you need to practice that quite a while. So anyway, a couple of horse experiences that didn't turn out real good and I don't ride them much anymore. Um, so, and plus I had read a lot about, about people losing thumbs, you know, when they're team roping. Cause when you, uh, when you throw that rope and you've got to, I guess dally is what they call it around that horn that you can get your finger caught up mm-hmm. in there and mm. snap it off, break it, whatever. But I like my horse with a throttle, like a four wheeler. Cause when you let off, it stops, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, these horses are really smart. So, I mean, they kind of know what to do, but you kind of need to be ready for what what they already know to do. So, okay, interesting, interesting stories. I've got some cat stories, but I don't want to tell them because it's it's cruel. So we won't go into the cat stories. And that was that was a younger time, way back in another another place in time. But okay, that was exciting. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your enthusiasm yeah. is washing over me like a wave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can just feel it emanating. Okay. All right. We're going to take a little break after the uh, animal stories. Come back and talk about some stuff we found in the Bible. I understand we're talking about old Jonah. There's an animal story for you. Uh, mm-hmm. This is quite the animal story right here. Yeah. I just ate a lot of catfish for lunch. It was good. But <laughs> I'm glad you didn't say cat food. I thought that's what he was going to say. No, no, not reason. cat food. No, but that's good. Okay. We'll be back. It's fun to eat supper with your family, especially when there is good food on the table. Father is certainly enjoying his supper. So is Carol. So is Mother. Just look at that plate. Aren't you feeling well, Bill? Aren't you hungry? What can be the matter? After supper, it's fun to play a while before bed. But there's still something wrong, isn't there, Bill? Yes, Bill you're getting a stomach ache. You have a stomach ache, it isn't any fun to play. Poor Bill. Mother can tell right away that Bill isn't feeling well. Yes, Bill's put to bed to get some rest. Now, why does Bill have a stomach ache? Well, perhaps it wasn't what he ate, but the way he ate it. Let's go back to this morning and see how Bill's stomach ache might have happened. Bill wasn't at breakfast on time this morning. He didn't get up when father first called him. Orange juice, one big gulp of it. Milk for the cereal, splash it on. Gobble down the cereal, but leave most of it. But what about Bill's eating habits? Into his mouth went some egg. Right away, a big bite of toast. And there was some bacon. So he stuffed in part of that. And Bill was off to school. But he ate so fast. And do you think he ate enough? At lunchtime, Bill had some fine sandwiches. He also had money to buy soup, but he didn't want to stand in line for soup. He was in a hurry to go out and play. So, how did Bill eat his lunch? After school, of course, Bill was hungry and he had some money. But did Bill leave his pop and candy only half eaten? No, sir. He emptied that pop bottle as fast as he could. He gobbled down all his candy. He ate some cookies, too. Then Bill didn't feel hungry anymore. No, sir. For once, he had eaten too much. At supper time, Bill still felt full. So he didn't hurry with his supper. He just poked at it. And he just didn't have any appetite. Well, Bill, now you know what might have caused your stomach ache. You see, you hurried so all day long. You rushed through your meals, and then in the afternoon, all those sweets. In fact, Bill, you mistreated your stomach all day long. No wonder you have a stomach ache. Think you know now about good eating habits? Downstairs in time for breakfast. Give yourself time to eat a good breakfast. That's right. Drink your juice a little at a time. Doesn't it taste good? You just never took time before to find how good food can taste. Mother is pleased and proud. Breakfast is more fun this way, isn't it? Yesterday's stomach ache is forgotten. 
Hey, we're back. Thanks for sticking around. And uh, we had more animal stories in the green room, but you'll just have to come. You know, you should come. uh, This is an official invitation for a studio audience sometime. If you'd like to be in a small studio audience, send us us that request to comments at MikeTheBaptist.com. And if we're in a good mood, we'll let you come. Bring food. Bring food. That's the only requirement. We'll review it. Uh, uh, but we'll we'll set you up a place over here, and you can be our studio audience. We'll see how that goes. Mm-hmm. Uh, comments at MikeTheBaptist.com. We're going to talk about some stuff we found in the Bible, and the preachers are going to lead us. Sweet. So you, you were talking about animal stories. That's kind of our segue into the Bible stuff today. Well, you guys all know the story of Jonah. I mean, just out of curiosity, what is the first thing that pops into your mind when you think of the story of Jonah? I guess the fish or the rebellion. Yeah. Submarine ride. Pinocchio. The smell of Pinocchio. the stomach okay. stuff yeah. lining. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. Sorry. It just... Yeah, you know, the uh, the whole riding in, it's a cool story, like to be able to ride in a whale of a fish, a big fish, but then to be vomited onto the, the shore, I, I'm not so positive that I would enjoy that aspect of no. it. Yeah. It smelled like fish food. I don't know. No. Yeah, so I just remembered, before we dive into this, you guys know that just recently there was a guy that was a scuba diver that got momentarily swallowed up by a whale. Seems like I did hear that. Mm-hmm. And then, hear then he that. got uh, like spit out 20, 30 feet in the air and landed in the water. The guy never actually saw what it was that took him in, but he was a scuba diver, and he actually got swallowed up by probably a, a baleen whale or something like that, and then got spit back out once the whale realized it wasn't food. So anyway, uh, it's plausible. <laughs> you know, a lot of times uh, anthropologists and you know people that work with zoologists and you know people that work with oceanographers and all that stuff, they'll say that uh, there's no such thing. It, it's not possible, but I mean. There was a guy that had it happen to him later. He may not have been in the belly of the whale, but he was in the whale's mouth for a little while. It's kind of crazy. So that's that's kind of what we think about, the sensationalized aspects of Jonah. But some of the incredible aspects of the story of Jonah is that Jonah is an Israelite that God sends to his enemies. And Jonah's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm, I'm perfectly fine. I love sharing the gospel here in Israel, but you want me to go to Assyria. The crazy thing is Assyria, 50 years later, is going to just come in and absolutely brutalize Israel. And that is where God sent Jonah to share the gospel. So Jonah goes there, shares the good news of what it is to serve and love and follow God. And the crazy thing is, People get saved. Like, a whole lot of people get saved. They repent. They do all this crazy stuff. And repent is just a fancy theological term that means you're walking one direction, and then you turn around and you go the other way. So the Assyrians were running hard and fast away from God. They repented. They turned away from the direction they were going and turned to God. And so that makes me think, I wonder when Assyria came in 50 years later and just absolutely devastated Israel. Did the fact that God sent Jonah to Assyria 50 years before, the fact that Jonah did that and the people repented, did that make Israel stay in exile a little bit easier? I know Jonah didn't want to do it, but I think one of the aspects of that story is that God actually prepared Israel's life to be easier by witnessing to the enemies. What do you guys think about that? Never really thought about that that way. I, I typically, what what you think about in this story is that this Jewish man goes to basically a Gentile nation, which again is a picture that when Christ comes, it's not just about the Jewish people that they're. But that's kind of interesting to think that God was softening the hearts of the Assyrians. So that when the Assyrians ultimately come in to discipline the Israelites, that God's providing a softer, softer punishment. Spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of cool. Do you guys yeah. ever find it hard to witness to your enemies, or to like? Well, witness is just a okay. Witness is just a term that 
like if you see a car wreck, you witnessed a car wreck and, and you tell the story about seeing that. Well, witness just means that you saw something happen and then you tell other people the story. Do you guys ever find it hard to tell the story of God to people that you just don't like, that maybe irritate you, that you don't get along with? Uh, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly because you just don't want to talk to them. Yeah, I was going to say, you probably wouldn't be talking yeah, to them. You just anyway. don't really want to be around them. So that's the, that's the hard aspect of it. But um, it's also the other side of it is, well, they need Jesus. You know, mm-hmm. and it's like, hey, I kind of want to tell them that because maybe they won't be such a jerk. You know, yeah. if, uh, if they get to know, <laughs> you know, somebody good like God, uh, you know, maybe we'll get along in the future. You know, if they have a lifestyle change. You know, when you pray for your enemies, uh, it, it does at least one thing. Changes your heart. Doesn't it changes it? your heart. That's right. But you have the very real possibility of when you pray for your enemies, you have the very real possibility that it will change their heart as well. That's right. And that is so cool. And that's kind of one of the stories of one of the themes of the story of Jonah. That's what I was going to ask. What's that got to do with Jonah's deal here? Well, that that's one of the things. Uh, Is that he, he was he there. didn't want to go to the he enemy. He was there doing that. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. God told him to go there to the enemy. Mm-hmm. He didn't want to be around him. Just like, you know, I really don't want to be around you a lot of the time. So, yeah. you know, it's like. <laughs> uh, but you yeah. have to be. You're obligated. <laughs> that's right, you know. So, but he didn't want to do that. He had to, you know. Right. You know, I think sometimes as preachers we, we feel that burden. It's hard to tell lay people you need to go witness, you need to tell people about Jesus, and if we're not doing it, as much as we should be doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, we'll look for opportunities not to do it, mm-hmm. probably as much as we look for opportunities to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, because, again, you're in you're in the business of talking all the time, so there's a lot of times you just don't want to talk. Yep. So uh, our families, me and Susan and Janet and Michael, all had an opportunity to go on vacation together, and we are taking an Uber ride back to the airport. Mm-hmm. So uh, me and the two ladies jump in the back, made Michael sit up front with the driver, you know, and I'm sitting back there just smiling. Like, <laughs> so I'm like, I'm fixing to grade you on whether you talk to him He's about Jesus to go to or work not, here. you know. Yeah. And how did and, that uh, work out yeah. for us? <laughs> so the guy didn't speak very good English at all, and Michael wasn't feeling good, so it was just a pretty quiet ride all the way. <laughs> and I said yeah. something, he goes, I know, I was kind of like, okay, I need to talk to him, but I couldn't understand a word he was saying. <laughs> yeah, this this would have been a very bad. Did you manage to get anything out? I don't think so. No, it's like, I it's like, just get me to the airport. Yeah, it was like <laughs> yeah. airport. airport yeah. I was sick. It really wasn't yeah, a good he was, day. He wasn't feeling good, and then and, and dude, yeah, he he didn't speak redneck. <laughs> I figure you could get a pass for that one though. I'm gonna take it. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I, just out of curiosity, since. Yeah. You brought this up. Um, what is your physical response when you're in the room with somebody and it's just kind of uncomfortable for you? Like, what is your physical response? What do you do? Do you have any particular tells that let you know that you're uncomfortable or let other people know that you're uncomfortable? I'll tell you what church, church people do. What's that? They get this real polite little kind of faint smile and they just sit. <laughs> now, some of them, if they're older, you can see that they're ticked off and that they just don't care. But... A lot of church people just kind of get that little smile. What is it your wife says? She has her awkward laugh. (laughs) 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 Like if you ask her something. Oh, is that? I've heard that all the time. Yeah, if she really doesn't want to answer you or she's like, like you could say – well, Sarah, you know, don't don't you like my preaching? Well, this went down real quick. Uh, Yeah, yeah. it's great. Yeah, Yeah. what do you do? What you know when I'm annoyed. I don't know if you guys do this, but when I'm really annoyed with somebody and they're just irritating me, I find it really hard to make eye contact with people. And that's big for me. Like I'll, Mm. I'll look at people and I want to engage with people. I like people, but when I'm really annoyed, I, I just find it hard to make eye contact. What about you guys? I think annoyed is a good word to bring up because I'm sitting here thinking there's not really anybody that I don't really like. I I can't think of many humans I've ever come across. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Uh, Even after you were so mean to him, I know. Well, it's just like oh, you know, I just you know I just brushed it. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I think uh, for me, I really try not to change because if it's somebody that I think they do need to know Jesus, that's what I always go back to. I try just to stay the same. 
because I don't want to interrupt that opportunity with them. You know, kind of like I am here. You know, I just try to not let y'all see. <laughs> I was just, just going to say, come to think of it, you've got that little smile I'm talking about. Yeah. A lot of times when we're talking nonsense, I look over at you and you kind of just sitting there with that little smile. Yeah. See, there you it's go. Like, now you know. That's the church that's a smile. No, I don't about. think I do. Now, if it's somebody, you know, uh, that I know, you know, or, you know, uh, we go to church together, we work together, we're family, whatever, and I'm just kind of ticked off at them. Oh, they're going to know I'm ticked off at them. Hmm. I'll be quiet, or uh, you know, you're uh, you're oh, going. Is you're, that what that means? You're <laughs> gonna you're gonna see it on the shoulder. You know, there you go. <laughs> Mike the Baptist comes through for you again. Uh, hey, you know the truth is though. There's times you just don't like you're talking about when you're sick. Yeah. There's times you don't want to fool nobody. That's true. I mean, you just don't want to fool nobody. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I'm sure Billy Graham had times where he just didn't want to come out of the hotel. Probably, but we never saw that, did we? You never saw it with him. No, you didn't. You did, however, see him take a TV off the wall and put it in the hallway because he's, you know, he did. He wanted to be above reproach. Like if here's the line, he wanted to be above reproach. So one of his rules was no, no TVs in there because we don't want to get accused of watching stuff we shouldn't be watching or get distracted. So he actually literally uh, ripped one off the wall, put it out in the hallway, and paid for the damages later. You really, you really serious. can't find bad things about him. No. If, if, you, if you're looking for a, I would say a model of somebody uh, that's in a, in a ministry. Uh, there. Mm. Ministry. Uh, if you're looking for a model of somebody that's in a ministry, I've I've never read, seen, heard anything anywhere close to out of sorts about that man. Yeah. Mm-mm. And what he did and what he's doing, and I guess his organization still to this day is. Uh, Pretty much above reproach. Yeah, they're, they, they're towing the line. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, there's just this understanding that the way that we feel about people really kind of, even as hard as we try to keep it, our emotions close to our vest, it changes our physical response to people. And Jonah's physical response to the Assyrians was to run away. And then God caught him with the fish. You guys know the story. And, and he's kind of in the belly of the fish for parts of three days. And then I, I'm, I'm like a 12-year-old boy. I think the worst part about the story is when he gets vomited onto the, the shore. Like, did he smell like a really bad fish market? I mean, like mm-hmm. a bad sushi joint. I mean, what <laughs> did he smell like after he had been in there for three days? Yeah. It couldn't have been good. It's definitely not an air freshener that they sell at Walmart. I'll just throw you throw that out there. But anyway, no, I don't think it would be. <laughs> Jonah, Jonah ends up going bad sushi market. I can see it on yeah. the label. Bad sushi market. <laughs> Car air freshener. So Jonah ends up going well, to well, Assyria. He brought it up. I mean, I did. I did. In the shape of a fish. Yes. I mean, that would be even better. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So Jonah ends up going to Assyria, and the Ninevites. They were they repent and that like that means that they were going away from God and they turned and went towards God. And that is just crazy to me. And you know what God's response to them was? His physical response to them, or at least the picture of his physical response was that he relented. He was he was fixing to punish them for their sins, mm-hmm. which is what Jonah wanted in the beginning. Mm-hmm. He wanted that. He wanted it, Assyria to get punished because they were crazy people. The Assyrians, back in the day, the Ninevites did crazy stuff. Like they would flay you alive and then hang your skin on the wall entering the city. I mean, that they were just bad people. And so I can understand Jonah not wanting to go. And then God did the unthinkable. He relented. And that is just insane. Jonah's response to that was, Well, this is the whole reason I didn't want to go, God. Mm -hmm. I mean, you told me I had to go here. I knew that I didn't want to go here because they're jerks. And then I knew that you were going to be good, God. And I knew that you were going to that they were going to repent because you're just good. And I knew that you were going to forgive them. I didn't want this to happen. And here we are. And that's just, I think that's us a lot of times, isn't it? Do you guys find it easier to offer grace or to demand justice? Yeah, we tend to want to demand justice. And, you know, one of the things that happens to us the longer we're in this relationship with Christ is that we tend to forget 
how we got into this relationship with Christ. Um, you know, I'm always I'm always trying to remind us at church, don't look down on other people. Um, I've got I got folks in our family that you know they will look at somebody else across the table at the family. Ah, the only reason y'all got married is because she got pregnant, and the only reason this da, da, da. and you're like, you were doing exactly the same thing. You just didn't get caught, and you you forget that you know there. But by the grace of God, go I. And so, yeah, I can see why Jonah wouldn't want to have his enemies forgiven. But the reality is, if God's not willing to forgive them, then He shouldn't forgive me either. And that's the part we forget. We really do forget how bad sin is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, I think you hit it on the head right there. One of the reasons that we struggle to offer grace and one of the reasons that we demand justice instead is because we forget our own sin and just how bad our sin is in the face of God. Isn't it a little bit nutty that uh, man could demand anything yeah. From God, I mean, if you even halfway believe in the concept of God being out there, how <laughs> it's pretty uh, pretentious is that a word? Yeah, for a, a, a human being to demand anything out of Him, mm-hmm. and we really have no clue when God calls us to be holy. We really have no clue what that means, and we really have no clue how bad we are. And we and then we then look at the things in life, and we're like. Oh, that's not fair, and that's not fair, and that's not well. It's really not fair that God sent His only Son to die for you either. You know yeah. that's that's not fair. Uh, when I was in college, we had this sweet mate who was uh, gosh, he was just really dumb. I'm going to be honest, he was really <laughs> dumb. You know, we were we were really smart because we were like sophomores or juniors, and he was just really dumb. He's this freshman kid from Germantown. Never forget this kid out of Germantown, Tennessee, and he thought he was all that and. One night he busts in our suite and he had left his jacket down at the university center and he went back to get it and somebody had taken it. He was just distraught. I mean, he was ready to go kill somebody because they had stolen his jacket. And here was his, here was his reasoning in his mind. He said, it's not fair. I mean, I haven't stolen anything in a long time. <laughs> That's not how that works, dude. It's not how that works. In a long time. Yeah. It's been a minute. Yeah, it's been a minute. Uh, since I, so you should <laughs> somebody shouldn't have stolen from me because I haven't stolen anything in a long time. And, uh, gosh, I, I think that's where we can get to looking at people and say they, you know, and that's what we're doing. They don't deserve forgiveness. They don't deserve God's relationship. They don't deserve forgiveness. Look how bad they were. And, and really, that's who we are, too. Yeah. We need to keep a, a close eye on ourselves, you know, and it, because we always want to compare ourselves to another person instead of comparing ourselves to Jesus, you know, who is the, the measuring stick for us. Yeah. And when I compare, you know, we've said it many a time, we can always find somebody to compare ourselves to to make ourselves look awesome. But when I go and start comparing myself to Jesus, I realize, man, I, I'm terrible. Think Absolutely. It's, it's, I think it's just a natural thing people compare themselves. Yeah, because oh, yeah. I want to feel good about myself. Yeah. Because I don't know that you get taught that, do you? Mm-mm. I never was. It's just in there, isn't it? Yeah, I'm just, just in your in your nature, I guess. Yeah. Well, yeah, because they talk about toddlers, you know. And here's the thing. Mine, mine, mine. Here's the mine, things, mine. Here's the the things thing we don't learn. want to be. Most of us come to the realization that we're not the best. We just don't want to be the worst. That's right. <laughs> Yep. So if I can be somewhere in the middle, I feel okay about myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, again, we all go to church together, and one of the excuses that people have from coming to church is, oh, you don't know what I've done. If I came in there, the roof would fall in. And, uh, you know, I would just say to anybody listening that's thinking those thoughts, uh, come sit down beside some of us because we're not perfect. I mean, we haven't got it all figured out. Uh, we still sin. We still make mistakes. And... Uh, Church should be that place that's inviting to people. Mm-hmm. I mean, it really should. It should be that place where people that are hurting feel invited to come to. But it's sad that, and most of it they've worked up in their own mind, mm-hmm. but it's also sad when we give them reasons to think that. I, I would say uh, all of us good folks who are in churches all the time need to be real aware of anybody that walks in in your building that, you don't know or don't know real well you ought to be real careful about it's intimidating how you treat I don't know them if y'all have experienced this lately um but when you go to a new church when you pull onto the grounds 
you're really unsure about what door to go in. It's, am I here at the right time? And if you go in and everybody kind of turns their back on you and starts talking to their buddies and not talking to you or acting like you're not there, I mean, I can see where people get turned off mm. uh, to that kind of stuff. Yeah, I went to a little church. I used to travel with a, a golf business I had, and um, I would travel. And I can recall being in East Tennessee a few times. And when I was out traveling like that, I would go into these towns and sign up a course, and then I would either go back or stay for three or four days and, and uh, do the business surrounding that course. But if I was in these towns on a Wednesday, I always went to little churches and visited them. I just love little country churches. And I recall going to one over there in East Tennessee, uh, and it was, it was a small country church. There was probably 45 people there on a Wednesday, 40. And, uh, you know, adults, children, everybody in the same room for a church service. But uh, nobody talked to me. Mm-hmm. I don't recall anybody even really looking at me until I was leaving. This one fella said something to me just kind of when I was on the way out, asked me where I was from or something. But it was very awkward, mm-hmm. just incredibly awkward. And it didn't bother me that bad, but it did strike in my psyche a little bit about how I wished someone would have talked to me just because I like people and like you said you like people I want want to engage with people and talk to them and I got nothing and I I can recall speaking to several of those people and getting nothing I mean it was very very odd yeah that's rough you know that's one of the things that it's kind of neat about the church that we're going to you know we've been very uh, deliberate in trying to overcome things like that and Janet and I, you know, when we went to go see TJ out in New Mexico a couple of weeks ago, we went and visited a, a church out there. It's very similar to our church. And it was so, I told Janet, it's like, we just want to kind of observe and just see how they do things. It was really neat because they're doing the same things that we've been really working on the last several months at the church. Before we got to our seats, you know, we were greeted three times before we sat down in the, uh, in the worship center. And then we were talked to several more times before we left. I was like, that's awesome. It's neat mm-hmm. to, neat to see churches actually trying to to help us out well you know i i can only speak for the church i belong to i've been there 25 years the people are just so real they're not pretentious people uh they actually i know most of them they don't have any reason to be pretentious <laughs> <laughs> they're just like me you, know, you, you are what you are but they're very good they've always been very good this family of people about just being friendly and real and welcoming to other people not judgmental that we know of and i know there are a lot of churches that way it's not this one but to me that's a key thing the comparison in that and the little church i went to in east tennessee if you're if you're wanting to invite people in to uh, hear what you want to share with them about how good a deal this is and you want other people to experience that and know it it's going to help if you're friendly on the front end Mm mm-hmm Because people, uh, you know, there was a point in that little church where uh, if you're not going to talk to me, okay, I'm I'm done. It's there was a point there where you you know you'd have to make me a pie or something to kind of get back on my good graces. But but anyway, so Jonah, so did Jonah go into this area and build a church? Nope. I mean, so Jonah goes in and his job was to share this message with people. Correct. Mm -hmm. So what did he run into? Uh, he ran into hostility and... He ran into people that were ready and willing to repent. Oh, okay. And he was just basically, here's where it is. God's fixing to destroy this city. So he didn't he think didn't, that's he what he was going into. He didn't say yeah. God might relent. He just comes in with this message. Hey, God's fixing to destroy you. And he left it at that. He did not offer hope or grace anywhere in his message. And yet the people relented. I mean, they they turned from their attitudes. <laughs> pretty good, it's pretty good. Yeah. But the question is, so are we to are we to uh, go into Walmart after a while? And well, is God telling you to do that, Mike? <laughs> no, all right. Did not tell me. God told Jonah to do that specific uh, thing. So you know, good, thank you. You know, for, I think it's just <laughs> it's really looking for opportunities because, well, I'll just say from my perspective, if I go up and down the highway and there's some guy standing out there with a big cross screaming and yelling you're going to hell you're 
I'm rolling my windows up. Even as a Christian, I don't want to hear that good stuff. You know, you're just you're just being a booty. Um, but I think our responsibility is just as we go. You know, as you go to Walmart, you're going in there for a purpose to get stuff. But you're just to have your eyes open and listening. And I mean, if you come across somebody and they're sitting over there crying and upset, probably shouldn't just push by them and go, "Excuse me." You know, or bless you, my daughter, darling, you know, but <laughs> just try to, hey, hey, what's going on? And if they want to share, then you listen to that. If it can go to the next level where you can have an opportunity to share, if they look at you and say, I'm fine, I don't want to talk to you, then you've done what you were supposed to do. So it's not the receiving of the message that we're responsible for. It's the looking for opportunities to share the message and, you know, Sometimes it's something just real simple. Uh, we were at lunch the other day, and I just asked the little girl. I was like, "Hey, we're going, we're going to pray for our lunch. Anything we can pray for you for?" And she was like, kind of took her back. She's like, "Well, yeah, I'm in school right now, and it's a lot going on. Can y'all just pray for me?" And I was like, "Sure." We did that. We prayed for her, and you know, I paid the bill and got up and left. You know, she didn't chase me out in the parking lot and go, "Hey, that really meant a lot. Would you tell me more about that?" But if she had, I'd have been glad to talk to her about that. So. You know, the gospel is the good news. You don't have to be forceful with it, you, but you do have to look for opportunities. Mm-hmm. And I think too many of us, we don't even want an opportunity because we just want – and our culture is making that worse. I don't know about you guys. Oh, yeah, we're getting in our little islands. I, worse I, I, I love that I can pay <clears throat> at the gas pump and I don't have to go talk to that goofball sitting behind the plexiglass window. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I do I just because I don't want to have to build a conversation. I don't want to build a relationship. I just want yeah. gas, you know. Yeah. I like self checkout. A lot of people don't like self checkout. I love self checkout. Oh, there's people that just get screaming mad about that. I love self checkout because again, I don't have to deal with somebody, uh, and that's terrible. But it's the reality of kind of who I am sometimes, and uh, but it doesn't mean I still have that excuse that well, I don't have, I don't have to be nice to anybody. I don't have to, you know, smile at anybody. Um, but but you know here's another thing I'm thinking about while you're telling. Uh, I love how when Jesus was uh, instructing these disciples, he said, "As you go." Right. And I always hang on to that phrase, "As you go," because I'm thinking about even in your story right there. Even though you don't like sometimes to deal with anybody, and you go to the self checkouts, and you do like those, that's as you go, and you're liable to run into stuff right there where you yep. can still. Yep. But that's as you go. Yeah. Yeah. So as you go uh, didn't necessarily mean uh, go start a thing like Billy Graham did because mm-hmm. everybody can't do that. Flip side of that, that was that was Billy's thing, and that's as he went, he did his thing. And it, yeah. it's also you don't be so I don't know awkward about it. It's just as you go. Um, I heard a guy the other day talking about. Now hopefully this has stopped, but it used to be the day where. Christians would carry these tracks in their pocket and says, here's your tip. And that's what they leave for the waitress, oh. you know, and <laughs> I worked in the restaurant business. That's awful. <laughs> Don't ever do that. And that's, leave me money. <laughs> and that's what this guy said. This guy said, listen, people come to work to make a living. They didn't come to work to get a track. Now, if you want to leave a track, he said, what you ought to do is leave double tip the double. amount. Hmm. Then they might go something different about this guy. What, what is it? But don't leave a piece of paper that says, oh, you need Jesus when they can't feed their family. Mm -hmm. So, again, I like the way you put that, Mike, is that just as you go, as you're living life, you know, look for those opportunities. It's okay to be introverted. It's okay to be extroverted. It's okay to be quiet sometimes. It's okay to be loud sometimes. But as you go, look for those opportunities, uh, and you'll recognize them if you're looking for them. Most most time we're not looking. And that's just it. We're not looking. You know, we... You know, part of our prayer, uh, you know, for ourselves should be, you know, let me be able to see people, you know, the way God sees us, because mm-hmm. there's a lot of people that are around us, and man, you know, they're hurting, yep. mm-hmm. and most of them don't know Jesus. I've, I've got this crazy guy that comes up to me every Sunday and says, "Just get up there and tell them God loves them." I've seen that guy around yeah, church. I bet you have. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> but there's a lot of truth to that, you know, and that that's one of our wishes for this podcast. You know, this podcast is not just for our church friends and our little groups that we run in, but it's that person that would listen to this to hear, maybe God really does love me. Mm -hmm. Because that's the hardest thing, I think, to get through is that the Assyrians knew they were bungholes. Mm -hmm. They knew that. 
They, they were mean, angry. I don't know if I should buzz that or not. Yeah, we're going not, to that just, uh, just be safe. Yeah. Plus, I have a buzz quote. Yeah, it's they, a theological uh, term that means jerk. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, they knew. I mean, <laughs> angry, angry people know they're angry. I mean, people that flip you off in the car, they know they're, they know they're angry. Yeah. And they somehow f- have come to the place where they don't realize or don't think God can love them. I've done so much. I'm so bad. I'm so far down this rabbit hole. Nobody could love me. And the big story of the gospel is that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Not while we got better, you know, but while we were at our worst, God picks us up, dusts us off, mm. says, I love you. That's pretty good news. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You guys know who evil Knievel is? Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I had the run. cycle. We all tried to be him. I had the cycle. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Dude, that was awesome. <laughs> that was an awesome uh, toy. Growing up, I, I mean, I started driving dirt bikes when I was two years old, almost three Um he still drives Just like he's two or still three. drive <laughs> motorcycles. It's awesome. But uh, did you know that Evil Knievel broke every bone in his body mm. and most of them twice? Yeah. Mm-hmm. At least. Yeah. And one of the biggest wrecks that he ever had, you guys are familiar with this, but one of the biggest wrecks he ever had was when he tried to take a rocket across the canyon. Right. Right. I yeah. think it was the Snake River, and, and he didn't make it very far at all. Even if stuff hadn't malfunctioned, he probably wouldn't have made it. And so he ends up trying to jump this just massive canyon, and he thinks, I've got, to, I've got this. I've got this down. I'm going to jump this canyon. Everybody's going to love me even more than they already do. And it just had massively terrible results for him. That's us. We, we have a tendency to look at each other on this level, and we think, well, I, I'm a little better than him. I'm, I'm further ahead than that guy. And what we don't realize is there's such a massive ca- uh, cavern, massive distance between us and God that's created by our sin. There's no way we can bridge the gap there. The main idea of Jonah is not this fantastic story about a guy spending three days in a fish. And then even it's not even about Jonah going to the Assyrians, going to Nineveh and people repenting and walking away from their sin. The main idea is that fast forward 800 years, the story of Jonah was a picture of what was coming. Fast forward 800 years and Jesus said death, burial, and resurrection was pictured in the story of Jonah. Just as Jonah was in the the belly of the well for three days, so Jesus would be in the belly of the well for three days. And the reason that Christ had to die on a cross and be buried for parts of three days and then to be resurrected is because we created such a distance between ourselves and God because we've sinned. And that's really actually the big idea of the story of Jonah is it's a picture of what Jesus did for us 800 years later. Knowing that... 800 years before Jesus came that his death, burial, and resurrection was predicted. How does that make you feel about Jesus? Does it make it easier for you to trust him? 800 years before Jesus came. It does me because it's like, uh, I kind of like things to be proven to me. Uh, It helps me accept things if if I know they've been proven before if, if it's happened before yeah answer is yes I've got a probably a very analytical mathematical mind whatever um, it's just we the way my, we don't we don't refer to it that way but <laughs> we, I know what you're saying I'm a bag full of nuts is what I've heard <laughs> if you haven't said that you should say that about but uh, that that's just the way my brain works and to know 800 years before Jesus. I tell you, you're pretty passionate about that. Mm-hmm. The thing that I think helped me the most in understanding who God is is that what we experience in a linear lifetime, 800 years is important. But what's interesting is that God had written this play before time ever began. God knew who Jonah was going to be, who he created him to be, how he could create a fish big enough for him to be swallowed, who the Assyrians were going to be. 
and so God God is literally this play is is being played out just like he wrote it mm-hmm. so there is no it's not as if Jesus shows up 800 years later and goes oh yeah remember that guy back there I'll give you the sign of Jonah before Jonah was God I had created am. him and knew what he was going to do and knew how he was going to then 800 years later use that as an illustration to point back to something we see it all the time when, when you go to a play the actors when they walk out on the stage they know where the props are they know what their lines are they mm-hmm. know what they're supposed to be doing we're all mesmerized oh I didn't see oh, I went to I remember going to the Phantom of the Opera and we were so cheap we bought the top tier level <laughs> uh, seats and there's that one scene where he's up in the rafters and he jumps down. Well, I knew he was coming way before anybody else did because I could see him walking around up there in the cheap seats. <laughs> You're high level yeah, with the rafters. Yeah, I'm like, there. oh, look, there he is. But you know, <laughs> Jesus puts all these things in place so that when he comes physically here, he knows where all the pieces are and the parts are. And that's even more amazing how amazing is our God that he would create wood and trees only to put himself on it? Mm-hmm. That would be his yeah. method of death. I mean, uh, if you told me right now, HD, I'm going to kill you with a ballpoint pen. Ball peen hammer. Oh. Or a ball peen hammer. <laughs> yeah. I would not invent that, nor would I bring you one, nor would I give you one. Right. And I'd be like, hmm, fix that. But that's not what God does. God actually created metal and wood mm. and the Romans. Yeah and the Jews and the situation so that he could be put to death. So this brings up an interesting thought to me, Jason, speaking of thinking different, uh, I don't know what people call the way I think. You're not mathematical. I'm not, I'm not exactly mathematical. It's a strange math. Uh, you think people that uh, uh, have trouble understanding the Bible because there's so many of these fantastical stories and uh, donkeys talking and the guy getting swallowed. Blah, blah. You think uh, people that have trouble making sense out of all that would make more sense out of the Bible if they read these stories uh, and a, maybe tried to apply what's going on in these stories to the basic message uh, that God is laying out in the Bible? You know, because I know I know somebody that I like to talk about the people that aren't church, that aren't in church all the time. If you stumbled upon what we're talking about right now, we're talking about a guy getting swallowed by a whale. You're going like, ah, oh, give me a break. I mean, and then the more you hear about the story, he's in there three days, and, you know, wait, wait, he built a fire in there. I mean, your mind goes to – so if you just hear that story – and you don't have any kind of context about why all that would be in there. I can see where it would be real confusing and and just sound silly. I, I think I was getting to where I was going to ask a question about how should people look at stories like this one we're talking about right here? Because this is a pretty fantastical story. I don't know anybody that got swallowed by a whale. I don't know. I haven't seen that in in any other history anywhere where that happened. Well, I think. What was my question? Part of well, I think how people look at the Bible and how should oh, they yeah. interpret that. These crazy stories. These stories and, that are they're supernatural. They're unbelievable. It's not of the normal natural way of things. But let's pull away from the Bible just a minute and just look at people. We love. We love. I mean, Michael has said he's he's our sci-fi nerd Mm -hmm. we love these big stories that aren't real we love harry potter we love you know bewitched when we were kids we we love all these things that are outside of the natural order of things people love ghost stories they love all they love all that stuff we're attracted to it why because in our in our inner being we really keep thinking there has to be something more going on here than just the math that we know than just the science that we can prove. Because even to a person who doesn't believe in God, explain to me how you know you love your child. Well, I just do. Show it to me in a test tube. Well, I can't show you in a test tube. Well, do a math equation. Show me, prove to me you love your child. Well, I can't do that. But you know you do. So there are those things that are unexplainable 
but yet we're attracted to those things. And the story of God is really, he's supernatural. He's, he's not of this world, he's supernatural. And he does supernatural things. And when you really stop and think about it, who are the heroes? Superman. Why do we like Superman? Because he can do things I can't do. Mm-hmm. Why do I? Why do the you know girls love Wonder Woman? She can do things that I can't do. Why should we listen to these stories and and believe in these stories? Because we need a supernatural God. God can do for me things that I can't do for myself, and that's what we really need. Mm-hmm. If I could fix me, I, I you know it's like mechanic work. I'm a terrible mechanic, <clears throat> but. If I know my battery goes down, I know how to fix that. Mm-hmm. And I'll go up here to AutoZone or someplace, and I'll get me a battery, and I'll put it in, and done. I go that to, happened to me today. I, 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 today. Cold, cold weather. I go, to a mecha- I go to a mechanic when I can't fix it. Mm-hmm. And when you get to that place in life, that's when you need to go to God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, these stories with, like with Jonah, <clears throat> they're – they, uh, they're awesome stories. We use the word awesome an awful lot, but really God's what's awesome. Yeah, and, hang on. And uh, I guess it's used a lot in churches, awesome. Yeah, yeah, and we, you know, God's awesome. Okay. These stories <laughs> are awesome, and they point us towards that awesome God. Mm. And, uh, you know, we, we see all these supernatural, what we consider supernatural things, but these awesome things that God did, and it's all pointing us to him to get us to the, the root matter, and that's what we're told to do. Share the gospel. You know, tell people about Jesus. And uh, one of these stories like Jonah might get somebody's ear. And, you know, why can you believe that? Well, let me tell you about my Jesus. You know, let me tell you about something that's really awesome that he did for you. And it just brings us all back around to what we're supposed to be doing. Well, Jesus himself told little parables. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, when he could have just said, I mean, he's God. He could have just said the truth and moved on. Yeah. There you go. But he didn't. Right. A lot of times he told a little story where uh, your mind could pick up on that and make it understandable to you. Sure. I'm not talking about you specifically. I know it fits. But you Wait. know what's fascinating to me uh, is is any human being who's a know-it-all. Because I have this picture in my mind. Anytime that thought comes up in my mind about somebody being a know-it-all or me, there's this image I have in my mind of me standing here on the planet and then above me is a camera that's that slowly starts zooming out above me and then i get smaller and smaller and smaller Mm -hmm. and this picture finally goes out into the universe and i don't even see myself Mm -hmm. how could i possibly pretend i know very much of anything Mm -hmm. i can't and you can't either i mean there's so much we don't know and herein to me lies the fascination with God. Everything I don't know, he does. Mm-hmm. That's a big thought. That's you know, a big thought. One of the things that you brought up the, the idea of miracles and how they're kind of fantastical and everything. One of the things that we forget is the timeline of the Bible is thousands of years. And we, we hear the stories of the Bible and we think miracles happened every day. It's thousands of years that gets compressed into a book that's this big. And so you, you think that these miracles are happening every single day. They're not. They're still out of the ordinary. And that's the thing that we're like, oh, there's just no way that that happened because it's out of the ordinary miracle. But let's look at a miracle that happens every day that we just disregard. You cannot put in a Petri dish all of the elements in a human being and create life. <laughs> no. <laughs> you can't do it. Doctors have tried. Uh, scientists have tried. They literally will put all of the elements in there and they can't even create one strand of DNA, much less a functioning, living human being. It's a miracle that happens every single day. The things about the Bible that make us disregard it is because they're, in our mind, fantastic, out of the ordinary miracles. But there are miracles that happen every day that we just kind of disregard. And in the same way that we're not in control of life, something else causes life to happen. And that something else is actually God. It's the same thing that he wants to do for us, not just physically, but spiritually. This whole story of Jonah is that it's really a picture pointing forward to just how much God loves you. He loves you so much so 
that he was willing to die for you. He loves you so much so that he was willing to separate himself from the Father as a sinless, the only sinless human that ever existed to take on your sin and my sin and to be brutalized to the point where his time on the cross was short, six hours or so, but it was short because he had been brutalized on the front end so much so that it, it just his life was gone like that. And it wasn't that his life was gone. He gave his life for us. He decided the moment when his life ended. He chose that for us. He chose to take that on so that we wouldn't have to. That that just seems to me a God worth following you know, one and of the, trusting in. One of the things that kind of came to mind, Jason, as you were saying that, we started out talking about Jonah not wanting to go talk to these Assyrians. But in their world, there were only two kind of people. You were either us or them. That's the only kind of people in the world. Male, female, but you're either male, female, us, or you're male, female, them. That's the only classification of people. And one of the things that made Jonah mad was, God, now you don't just show that you love us, but you're also showing me that you love them. And again, all the hatred we got going on in this world, and we start classifying people based on gender, race, culture, money, and all that stuff. And really the reality is God loves all of those people. Mm-hmm. Because in this story, God proved to Jonah, I love you and and I love them as well. <laughs> and that's who I am. And so That's everybody. It's everybody. Yeah. So this is a uh, This is available to everybody. It's available to everybody. Huh. What would somebody do if they wanted to trust Jesus as their savior? They they listened to the story of Jonah and they said, "That's a pretty fantastic story. I I think I do actually believe that it, it happened. I, I do believe that man it, it was pointing forward to Jesus and what he did for me and, and that sounds like somebody I want to know more about what would they how would they trust that person wait a minute I want to add a layer to that what if I don't believe this story about Jonah but inside there's something still making them interested in this how okay. do you trust that that person H.D. what do you think I think the best place to start is just say in your head or with your mouth God if you're real reveal yourself to me it's just that openness that I want to know um, and and kind of start start down that um, path um, we make it way too difficult I mean you can go down a you know you need to repent you need to believe but I think just being honest and going God if you're there if you're there show me that you're there and, and then begin to watch um, if you really want to know, God's going to reveal himself to you. And that's not uh, that's not just some fancy talk. It's just the reality that if you really want to know and you're honest with God, uh, he'll, he'll start to show himself to you. Isn't it fascinating that if he exists, he's interested in you? Yep. <laughs> that's, that's pretty awesome. Oh, yep. <laughs> sorry. Awesome. I got carried away there. Right. Got caught up in the moment there, but yeah, I mean, it's—I uh, don't know. It's—it's it's hard to wrap your mind around. It's hard to wrap your mind around, but it's worth trying. If you would like to know more, send comments to yeah. comments at yeah. mikethebaptist.com. dot com. Yes, uh, and we won't send you a tract. Nope. I don't like tracts either, Jason. Nor will we send you to the local church. We'll, uh, yeah, we'll just have a conversation with yeah, you. Yeah, we just talk to you. Yeah. Hmm? So, okay. Pass the plate. <laughs> Good times. Churches can't do anything without passing the plate, singing a hymn, and tapping up a bulletin. We're Baptists. It usually involves food. Too. Yeah, I can't leave out food. No, all churches. Well, okay. Pretty much all churches like food. Okay. Well, you I think. You got I mean, included then. Everyone I've been Add to. that into your fourth, you know, food. Well, we've been trying to get food here. I know. I mean, we, we've been successful a couple of times. Actually, I've got some uh, uh, homemade chips here. I make homemade chips, mm-hmm. and uh, not buffalo chips. 
<laughs> don't, Mike. Don't. <laughs> I'm looking forward to don't. these chips that yes. you've made. Yeah, uh, we're going to review them here is what I understand. Uh, we yeah. talked about that earlier, and I felt yeah. a little odd, you know, because I'm kind of shy. And I felt a little uh, awkward about uh, reviewing I, something of my Did you really own. just say that you're shy? I did. It's just, did you it's, choke a little when you said that I line? I did. It's a brand. Okay. I'm trying to work up my brand, but I need to change that particular <laughs> talking point. But first, uh, are we, uh, do we get to a synopsis here? Yes, yeah, I think so. We're good. And uh, good talk. It's interesting. I, when I knew we were going to talk about Jonah, I felt like, okay, here we go. A, a toddler Sunday school class is coming right up. But nope, we managed to dumb it down, and it was good. It was good. So you're saying we're dumber than toddlers? Uh, I'm not saying that. You're just implying it. <laughs> I'm not you saying that. You were hoping that. I would pick that up. You I know? also said I'm shy. So uh, <laughs> We're learning all new things today. <laughs> Speaking of learning things, any rowdy coming right up. Do you listen to or watch Mike the Baptist? Do you wear clothes? If so, we've got some great news. T-shirts and hoodies are now available at MikeTheBaptist.com. Just visit MikeTheBaptist.com, click on the merchandise link, and you'll find high-quality tees, hoodies, and even onesies for the babies in a variety of colors, all with the Mike the Baptist logo and familiar sayings from the program. Mike the Baptist is a true labor of love. No one has to pay to listen or watch the program, but Mike and the crew have to eat. So a portion of each sale of a t-shirt or hoodie goes to Mike's local Kroger, Walmart, or electric utility. It's kind of simple like that. In order to keep the program free, we have to generate a bit of income to pay the bills. When you make a purchase, you're not only doing the world a favor by wearing clothes, you're helping keep the messages of Mike the Baptist on the air. Thanks for helping out, and thanks so much for being involved in spreading the good news. What a great planet. Hey, everybody, it's time to play America's almost favoritest new game show, Any or Audi, where we challenge our guests to figure out if a phrase we give them is actually in the Bible or out of the Bible. Sharpen your wits, guest. You're about to be in the hot seat of Bible stuff, because you're the next contestant on Any or Audi. Howdy. Here's Mike. Well, we did manage to make it back, and uh, uh, we were ill prepared there a minute ago, but now we are, oh man, so prepared. We got it. Who's presenting today? Jason, I think, has one. Yeah, I've, I've got one. So, I, it just made me think the World Cup is beginning, uh, is, is going on, right? So, the World Cup's going on. Mm, and yes. Okay. If you say so. Yep. It's it's football, uh, but it's the world's it's football. football. Uh, foosball? Mm, yeah, football. Pretty much. F- I mean, you are talking about foosball, table foosball? No. Because I love that. I, I used do, to do love that me some foosball, too. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, that got me to thinking because soccer is way more popular than any any time football is. I mean, football is popular, but it's, it's nothing like soccer. Mm. And so that got me to thinking. Uh, I think just recently there was uh, somebody that – in the World Series, jumped off and ran around on the field, and kind of got tackled and, and carted off. And you know, periodically you'll see you'll see people that will like begin to strip their clothes down, like for a bet, and then just run around on the, the soccer field and everything. Now this it is got, in your out, you know. This is in your okay, all right. It got me to thinking: <laughs> Are there streakers in the Bible? Oh man, <laughs> I was wondering where this was going. Uh, I'm gonna say yeah. Any? I'm gonna say any. Any? Yep. You gotta name them. You can't just, you know. Adam and Eve. <sighs> no, they oh. weren't streakers. That doesn't. They were count. nude. They they were naked, but they I'm didn't. I'm sure they, they ran sometimes. The, these people, streakers, realize that they're doing that. That oh, they're I they're see. going from clothed to naked. Adam and Eve didn't realize they were naked. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> just out of curiosity, has this in the Bible or not? <laughs> I've uh, already got work to do again. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm still going to stick with my original answer. I'm yeah, going to say any. Route, I'm so. going. I'm going with any because I've got. I've got. I know at least one guy. Yeah, I'm going with any on this you as gotta, well. You got to have some. You got to have some verbiage though. You can't just say sure. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm thinking that's an any because I. I may be thinking of the same thing you are because you said I know at least one. I'm thinking of the. 
I'm thinking of the probably maybe the same one you are. But now, uh, to be a streaker, I can't believe we're talking about this right here. But anyway, You're we are. Welcome. So yes, it is liable. Uh, yeah, I'll give you that. Officially, to be a streaker, don't you have to run? Yes. Through something, and knowing that you're doing that. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to extend that conversation out there, but I just got. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, that seems like it. Well, the one I'm thinking of, though, H, if we may not be thinking the same one, because I'm the one I'm thinking of. He didn't do any running. I think he basically passed out or something. So that's not exactly a streaker. <laughs> Well, wait, 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 wait. Before he passed out. Are we thinking about the same story? I don't think so. Okay. Well, this, Maybe there's two. This, You know, now Ray Stevens is not in the Bible. <laughs> I, I've never come across that. Was Stevens. Stevens. That's in the hymnal. Fired. That's, that's, in, the, oh, that's in the hymnal. That's in the Mike yeah, yeah, Sometimes we get the hymns, oh, that's right. hymnal and the Bible that's confused. Yeah. Oh, you know what? That's, that's in your outing material all the Every time. Him, it sounds Maybe like. Him. Yeah. yeah. But I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing it. He's still. I'm just. Uh, where I'm going with it. What makes you say that? Well, I think there's a crazy individual one time. Mm-hmm. So, what makes you say that it, it's an any Mike? Michael? I think the same reason, but I may have the story confused in my mind about exactly how it unfolded. Uh, I'm trying to remember. We would like to hear your theology on this. Well, it's not theology. <laughs> I'm just trying to remember if, if the guy the ran around before he conked out or if he just conked out. If he just. Oh, no, wait. There is another story. Yes, any. Oh, that was a that was a that was very a coons, that was a that good was a any definite any. I'm gonna give you that across the camera, pat well, on the back. I'm, I'm going any. Are you, are we got a consensus here. I thought I'd lob a, a funny softball up there for you guys to hit. Uh, yeah, it's it's an any, yeah, at least in, in my version one. of it. And the uh, the reason is when Jesus was being arrested in the garden. There's this funny story in. Uh, okay, this ain't the one I was thinking, but I want to hear this one yeah. too. John so, Mark? Yeah, John Mark was the, most likely it was John Mark. Right? He's never actually named, but most likely John Mark. It's late at night, and Jesus has led them into the garden, and the disciples are sleeping. And then the guards come, and they catch one of the young boys uh, by their outer garment. And then uh, the Bible says that he got away by <laughs> slipping out of his clothes and taking off running. Uh, so that that's the one, the main one that I had in my mind. But there was also, I think, the Joseph? one you were referencing. What about yes. Joseph? Yeah, when he was when he was trying to get away from the uh, wife, temptation. Wife. Well, that was just his coat, though. That wasn't like everything, was it? His outer cloak. That's she what had I heard it. it he was. took off running. So I never thought he ran away naked. I thought that was just like well, his I mean, outer you know, cloak. I didn't say he was butt naked. <laughs> 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 the the one out there's another one the demoniac never wore clothes and he just he was demon demoniac pos- yeah. the demoniac he was demon possessed, possessed and oh. he he ran around in tombs naked so that was pretty crazy uh, depending on how far you take it Jeremiah also did something similar God told him to walk around anyway um, yeah there's there's that. No, it wasn't Jeremiah. Who was that? Was it Jeremiah? One of the prophets. Bullfrogs don't wear clothes. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> they so do yeah. in the Robinsons. It's in I meet the Robinsons. They do. It took me just a second to catch up on what you were talking about there. And I'm from the 70s. Yeah. I'll let my people down from the 70s. So the Simpletons got one right. Uh, this is this is a win. You're smart. <laughs> so, uh, it's any right. It's, it is it's 100% any. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I've always love. just been uh, amused by the story of likely it was John Mark <laughs> ran away from the guard buck yeah. naked. <laughs> so so in line with Jason's John Mark episode in the garden, Jesus was under such agony that he sweat blood. Yep. Mm. Any. Oh, here I go wow, again. You got you to make this a little more interesting. Oh, was that yeah. the end of it? I'm the one that's yes. always saying you got to drag this out here. But uh, well, I believe there might be scientific evidence that supports that. I, you know, just it's just a whim, something in my head there. But now we're talking about in the Bible. Is that what it says? That he sweated blood. That he sweated blood. I still am going to say any, but I want to hear the conversation from, yeah. from the professionals. I believe it says like sweat drops of blood, I think, isn't it? That's the, the phrasing that it is. And I, and 
I've always gone along with that, that, you know, he had some intense praying going on, unlike anything I've ever done. And uh, I believe it was blood that seeped out of them pores. So, one of the... In researching previous Bible studies and stuff, there you said scientific, but yeah, there's it is something that people can replicate, and science has documented as a real thing where people under such great stress, Mm -hmm. their blood vessels will actually pop and water or blood will actually seep through their pores. I have have read that uh, more than once, Uh, so. He's asking, did it say that specifically? Did what you are you asking? Did the uh, did the event happen, or was, is that the wording? Right, I think that's, he's going to the event. What just, was which one are you looking one? for? Did he sweat blood? Okay, that okay. it actually said that. I, I'm, I'm going to go with any, unless you're trying yeah. to trick us. I, I'm going with any as well. I think any too, but I'm I'm a little concerned because both of these were really quick. And we were so definite on our answers that uh, uh, we may have to have a third one. If you if you have a third one, we may have to move into a third one real quick. Because I don't. Yeah, oh, you don't? I don't. Because if you recall, I, I did have some editing to, to do in this program, and That's so it's okay. going to shorten it even further a little bit. But my, you know, it's all fine. We're it's good. all well. Yeah. And it'll help the people that listen fast. So Any. I think we're all any, aren't we? Yeah, I think we're all any. It's any. So... Luke twenty two forty four says like mm-hmm. great drops of blood. Mm-hmm. So there is some question: Was it actual uh. blood? But what the Bible says, like great drops of blood. He Have you got it called up there so you can kind of give us? I'd like to hear the line before Luke, and after. You might need your glasses. Twenty two. Yeah, I probably can't read. There you go. Oh, hold on. Luke, can you see it? Two, four, maybe. Okay. Maybe not. <laughs> I've got them over here if you need them. Plus, there's like 80 other pairs scattered around on tables and chairs here. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose from the prayer, he came to the disciples and found him sleeping, or found them sleeping in, a, in sorrow. So, did we win or not? It's an any, basically. I mean, I think you know, it's just. Why would you things. use that re- that imagery if it? Was Still just saying said, great yeah. drops of sweat. Yeah. He said dro- drops of sweat like blood. That yeah. would indicate to me that what we're talking about is, is happening there. The stress phenomenon. I, I'm good. We're taking it as a win. <laughs> He's going to let us be a winner no matter what today. It's in there, but it's the phrase <laughs> like. like. Yeah, that's the. Like is a, is a simile word, you know. That you know is, what's important about some of this stuff that we do here on In Your Audi, I think, is that. Uh, Little phrases that come out of the Bible can get really misused mm-hmm. and throw some people off track who are trying to figure some of this stuff out for real. Yep. There's a difference in trying to figure some of this stuff out uh, and what it means to the big story and just figuring out whether it's true or not. Right. There's a big difference. Yep. And I think it's important. The more I do this in your Audi stuff, the more it kind of – uh, conflict or not the word uh, confirms no uh, controls convicts me oh mm-hmm. you can use that man word. convicts that's a big word for me dude it's a big moment but the more that convicts me to make sure I know what I'm saying when I tell somebody else yeah. who is trying to figure some of this stuff out yeah. you so, want to be a good student don't you you want to be a good student so you tell the right things to others. Well, that's not the right thing to say to me because you, you're a rebel. I'm a rebel. Yeah. So, well. uh, but God's working on you. <laughs> he is. He's been working on me for a long time. <laughs> He's not There's done. a song about that, isn't there? <laughs> is there? Yeah. He's still working on me. Uh, that might have been in the other hymnal. Yeah, that's in another hymnal. Yeah. A different denomination than Mike probably, probably Baptist, I guess. I don't, would say so. Don't look, Ethel. <laughs> no, that's that's in there. Uh, we may look up the verbiage on that during the break. And speaking of break, a uh, good round of any or Addy. We are going to take a break. Come back. We're going to review some potato chips, sing a hymn in high church fashion, and call it a wrap. We'll be back. Oh, wow. What a great contestant and a fine sport today on Any or Audi, America's almost favorite new game show. Study up, future guest people. You're next in the hot seat for Any or Audi. 
It you is what it is, man. You can't change Let something. the chips fly. All right. Let the chips fall where they may. That's oh. actually. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> I'm glad I switched over and caught that on tape right there. Uh, so <clears throat> we've been having a little difficulty getting somebody to send us or bring us uh, something in the food line to review. So uh, I accidentally uh, made these these guys here some some of my homemade chips and somebody suggested why don't we review those so okay what was the you other day creole creole crab yes. or something well the other day I, i've done this uh uh kind of greek chicago mixture kind of a chip that i've created which is what we're gonna taste test today it's kind of my standard chip but then the other day i was experimenting and uh those tasted like pot roast <laughs> And they have an odor about yeah. kind of like that too. But yeah. I uh, the other day I was experimenting. And I made some. Uh, well, I was doing a shrimp boil. Uh, our son came up from Nashville, and we did a shrimp boil. And, and I, I was looking at that Creole seasoning and thought, <clears throat> my experiment. So I combined some Greek seasoning and some Creole and some uh, cracked that's pepper. Some Greek. And that's what we tasted the other day when you guys were here. Okay. And they were. But pretty good too. But then I thought I'd make you the original today, and that's what we're going to review today. So let's just do it. Let's just, uh, I guess, you know, we'll taste one, and then uh... <laughs> thank you. You've tasted a few already. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> chips let's, are let's, down. Let's taste one on the air now, and then we'll say what we think. So somebody pass them around there. Oh, that's awful dangerous. Jason. The uh, the official this is how the official food re- reviews go on Mike the Baptist, and uh, if you're watching the video, yeah, that's that's if, if you're watching that's not an animal, that's the back of Kuntz's head that Arr. got in front of the camera there. It kind of looks like an animal of some sort, but I'm gonna get two or three because that's just how it's gonna work. I know how this is here. <clears throat> so let's taste of these fellows, and and then uh, we'll talk about what they did to our palate and uh, what we think. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. well let me just say that one of them, one of the things I like best about God's creation is potatoes that's I just thought I'd bring that up and well you did a you did a good job Mike Okay, so now is there a secret recipe or? Yes, but but it's a secret, so I mean, you know, yeah. you see how that works. It's like that guy. See what I did there. It's like that Geico commercial. Is that cinnamon I'm tasting? It's my mom's secret recipe. Yeah, <laughs> secret recipe. You know, I'll reveal it someday, but I want to I want to profit off of it first. You know, when uh, after it becomes a multi billion dollar potato. I got chip a great in. marketing idea. What's you that? can't eat just one. Mm. Hey, that's brilliant. He might be onto something there. I don't know. I don't think that would work. <laughs> that one might already be taken. <laughs> okay, you, so let's hear what you guys think. Uh, you guys make some intelligent statements. Well, I think they're they're fantastic. You know. Uh, okay. I, I really, uh, yeah, man, they're awesome. Good stuff. I mean, it's, it, I feel like there should be something else like I, detailed. Not, well, you know, I'm not good at picking out cinnamon you know, or, or Greek or things like that. I'm just like, yeah, that's good. I like it. Okay. If it was bad. You have to say it. I'd tell you that. You know, I yeah. would. I wouldn't be sitting here holding the bag, eating more of them. I believe so that. So that's this, this is good stuff. All right. they're, Thank you. They're really yeah. good. They're okay. not like a Lay's chip. You know, just Lay's chips are crunchy, but they're just too thin and they crumble too easily. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're not quite kettle chip where they're super thick and and really hard. crunchy and yeah. hard. Right. It's like that. It's like Goldilocks. It's the perfect middle in between. Are these <laughs> went fishing and caught one? Are right these there. Uh, are these called trinkles? They are now. How big are the, the potatoes chips. when you originally well <laughs> baking them? They, they shrink up. Than this. <laughs> no, well these aren't baked. Uh, or, these are definitely fried. fried yeah. So well, they shrink up when they get fried, right? Not really. really? Uh, no, they really don't. Um, you would think they would, but they don't. Oh. very good stuff, Mike. Very good. Thank I you so much. You making those? It'd be good with like us. a bologna sandwich. Oh, if you if you uh, fried bologna, yeah, mm, a little a fried bologna sandwich and, and yeah. those right there. Do you fry bologna? Mm-hmm. I do fry bologna. Do you? Uh, I also smoke, smoke. bologna. I'll, I was getting oh, married yeah. to ask that as yeah, well. Yeah, That's some. Mm-hmm. You Gosh, like smoke bologna? I do love smoke bologna. Oh, I can make you some smoke bologna. What are you doing next week? 
uh, making smoked bologna right. sounds like. Sounds like an awesome thing. need to smoke a bunch of meat anyway, so. All right. Good. I will uh, connect smoke you up. and some trinkles. Now that your cholesterol medicine has kicked in. <laughs> yes, now that, yeah, we had a big discussion about that earlier, too. I'm supposed to be watching what I eat, and I do. <laughs> We're looking are, right at it, Those buddy. are better than the Grippos that you chased all over Lynch, Kentucky that Oh, time. well, now, hey, now, let's not say one's better than the other. Yeah. The they're Grippos different. are good. Those are barbecue chips. Yeah, they're good. They are very good chips. But I like these personally better myself. I like all these different – these these have all these different flavors that keep coming. <laughs> there there are a lot of different things in there. it's a secret. <laughs> I can't tell you. That's why I'm kind of trapped Is there a little here. bit of red pepper in there on those? <laughs> Not yet, but there needs to be a little. Okay, so. Why is my thumb done? <laughs> so it's a, and I'm feeling a little woozy. Wrong bag. <laughs> I made some. Uh, wow. I got to making some homemade lollipops for a while. We, we went through a phase where we made lollipops, all these different flavors, and I took some to a gathering with some friends one night, and. Uh, some of my friends got to dancing to records and all kinds of, and then they, they got to accusing me of putting stuff in those lollipops. Nope. <laughs> that just, uh, I've been a you sugar You just think high. of this stuff? Pardon? You just think of this stuff like sitting around? I think I'm going to start making lollipops. We do. Uh, roast some coffee beans. That's just how we do here at the, at the house. Well, it's over cool. at the house. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. cool. Short drive from the studio here. Yeah. But yeah, we just. We're not afraid to try stuff if we think about it. And, and see, if we had a studio audience, they would have also been able to participate in the tasting. This is exactly correct. Yeah. I so, mean, and, you know, it's an open invitation. Not only is it a good waste of time, but also you get some free crap when you show up. Listen, uh, I've spent a lot of years wasting time. These episodes with you guys in this room right here are, are some of the biggest, of <laughs> most uh, amazing wastes of times I've been involved in. I've been involved in a lot of crazy things, but these these are uh, right up there. Speaking of crazy things, uh, I, we were talking about this earlier. For whatever reason, uh, church people can't get together without singing a song. They just can't do it. I mean, I've been around church people for a lot of years now, and it's like, you know, men want to go fishing from church. Okay, let's go fishing. And we're out there fishing. When it's time to leave, they all want to gather up and sing. I'm going like, we're fishing. But who am I to change the way religion works in America? Not me. I'm the guy that conforms. So we're conforming here on Mike the Baptist. I sing in a hymn at the end of every program, and today's no exception. What hymn number is this one? This is 14. Okay. Um and this one actually gets used quite a lot. What's from um, the book? What's from the book? Yes. So, and one of the one of the early ones. Uh, by the way, we were talking also the other day that uh, uh, not too far from now we'll have uh, an actual Mike the Baptist public uh, hymnal that you'll be able to add to your <laughs> collection of hymnals. <laughs> It'll be reasonably priced. Reasonably priced, yeah. exactly. Uh, uh, aimed at Kroger. Everything here is always aimed at Kroger. Without Kroger, uh, you well, can't get those potatoes. Well, people will be able to sing along with us then. It would be good. That's, Let them that's true. Yeah. Turn to the right. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Did I tell you I have this uh, grand idea to do uh, Mike the Baptist live at church? That would be exceedingly incredible. Uh huh. It's uh, it's already formulated awesome, in huh? my head. So it's been swelling up in there, and it's uh, finally coming out of myself that's where i throw stuff in the subconscious sometimes yeah. and then i don't pay any attention to it but then it does its own thing it comes back out well it's out so i've been meaning to talk to you about that we'll have a discussion cranial pimple all right hmm. well i'm gonna, gonna miss, miss her, her when i get home but right now i'm on this lake shore and i'm, I'm sitting, sitting in the sun I'm sure it'll hit me when I walk through that door tonight. Yeah, I'm going to miss her. Oh, looky there. I've got a buy. I'm sure it'll hit me when I walk through that door tonight. Yeah, I'm going to miss her. Oh, looky there. I've got a buy. Good stuff. Mark. So touching. Choked up. That might have been a chip. <laughs> I'm blaming it on him. 
Well, thanks for sticking with us. We'll see you again soon. We just Christians. Trying not to go. <laughs> we got it buzz. Yeah, phone. I think it's that phone buzz. It did it again. like two or three times. It does it every every time. Yeah. <laughs> Mike the Baptist. <laughs> <laughs>